Joe, you ready for this? You nervous? Mine's kind of loud. A little bit. Is it, That's is it loud? Me. I was sitting there yesterday. He had to turn the way up. Yeah, I did. I did. But, oh, because he talks way back here. I'm like right here. Yeah, I had to crank it. I also just don't, I don't talk that loud. You got that many notes? What do people do? Do people come in with notes or do they wing some, it? Some of them do. Some of them wing it's it. Mix. You'll see, we get way off topic all the time. That's fine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 39 of the Slightly Serious Sign podcast. This episode is voted number one by Nakusa. Absolutely. Next Bond, a Nakusa yeah. brand. Oh. Uh, he Oops. gave us these sweet cups. Everyone else that's been on this podcast, please take notes because this is how you should show up to be on this podcast. It's not required. I kind of treat it like uh, I treat it like the open house. So vendors always are like, hey, how much does it cost to come? Like it's free, but you should at least be on the passport program. That's how I feel about the cups. It's free to come on the podcast, but you probably you should, should bring you gifts. Should show up. Should bring, bring gifts. gifts. Yeah. We prefer it. We prefer gifts. And he brought donuts for everyone here. Um, I went up there. They said, hey, go get donuts. They were gone. They were gone. Oh, Did I, you bring three? No, no, no. no. <laughs> he, it was a dozen plus some, but uh, but yeah. A that's big why, box of that's munchkins. Weird. <laughs> what we didn't even finish talking about is I said, <clears throat> when someone brings donuts, I like to just not say anything. It's just like a surprise. You know, one person will find out and it's like a wildfire through the office. It's like a free for all. I was here what a couple of days ago yelling at everybody because it was nobody's birthday because you have to bring donuts on your birthday. I'm like, how come it's nobody's birthday? I don't need a donut this morning. <laughs> then when they said this morning, no, there's donuts in there. I went in there. No donuts. Box is empty. Why does the person yeah. whose birthday it is have to bring the donuts? It's punishment. It's a, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, like when you grow up, you get gifts on your birthday at a certain age, it turns over. Yeah. You know, you're no longer get gifts. You're supposed to bring them for everyone else that already have gotten you gifts. Yeah. I get so. to take everybody out to eat for my birthday. Yeah, you do. The yeah. whole family and stuff. They can see if they can spend over a thousand bucks. I mean, we could try. And they hand you the bill. Oh yeah. I said, oh yeah. We say one bill. And he says, oh, that's nice. And then yeah. the, the waiter comes, uh, how do I separate the checks? I'm like, uh, two, two. And they're at the <laughs> end going, uh, one bill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, no. We make it look like you're going to pay, you know, one bill, one bill. He's like, oh, that's nice. No, it goes over there. Yeah. It's really that's nice. It's the way to do it. So, well, welcome to podcast. Thanks for coming out. Thanks Luckily, for having uh, me. Luckily, you didn't have to like fly in or anything like that, nope. but still had to drive. So appreciate you coming on. So the the title that we uh, came up with together is an answer for every application. So uh, Nakusi has a variety of products in their portfolio. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but to start, do you want to just do an intro? Who are you? Who do you work for? How long have you been in the industry? Uh, and all that good stuff. Sure. First of all, thanks for having me. I'm a big fan and have watched, I think, pretty much every podcast so far. Good. Good. Um, <clears throat> So Joe Letty from Nakusa. Um, I've been with Nakusa since 2014, although I did leave for a very short period of time uh, to try my hand at selling equipment. Realized uh, that wasn't enjoyable. <laughs> so kudos to you guys that sell equipment. Um, but I came back last year. Um, and yeah, so in a sales role. So I work with uh, all over the country. Um, I'm director of sales for wide format. So um, I work with all the reps and all the distributors to try to help them grow their wide format number with us. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much Family. it. So, uh, so I've got a wife and son. Uh, my son's 15. Uh, recently got into golf and he's now beating me, which is not hard to do. But uh, yeah, so he plays for his high school, plays travel, travel volleyball. But um, interesting, um, the way I got into the industry uh, a long time ago, uh, about 18 years ago, um, I used to sell radio advertising. So I lived in Chicago and I was working for a rock station. Uh, it was called 94.7 FM. It was a hard rock station called The Zone. Uh, and they actually flipped formats. So they flipped literally at noon one day, they flipped to an oldies format and they went from uh, a Metallica song into like a sweeper where they mention, hey, you know, you've known us as this station and now from now on we're going to be called this station. And they went right into a Beatles song. And within a day, I lost 100% of my accounts. Well, there you go. And we were 100% commissioned. So uh, I stuck around for about three months trying to rebuild the business and I thought it was easier. I went over to a competitor and they gave me um, a whole book of business and I was doing that. So about a year into that, my phone rings. It was uh, somebody from one of my previous employers, a manufacturer's rep. Um, he found my resume from a year ago 
that was still out there. <clears throat> and uh, it happened to be on a day when my boss kind of annoyed me. So I agreed to meet with him. So we went and talked. And he, I have those days every day. Right. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Same. So. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I set myself up for that one. I don't know how you guys do it. I could. I can't imagine working with my dad. But Godspeed. Um, no, but he lured me into the industry. So I've been here ever since. And um, I've worked for a few different companies. Um, but obviously uh, with Nakusa now uh, for 10 years. And it's a fantastic organization. Great products. Customers and distributor partners are awesome. So perfect. So before we get into... <clears throat> Excuse me. Before we get into kind of who Nakusa is, what they offer, uh, you told me that uh, you have some funny stories of Wensco. So did you want to? Did you want to go into? I've those? gone back and forth on this, and you might know where I'm going. He he told me yesterday <laughs> where he thought you were going, so we'll find out pretty soon. Go I've ahead. traveled with most of your reps. All of them are great, professional, and their customers absolutely love them. So uh, great job there. Um, the stories are. I don't know if you remember. I was relatively new. We were at a an open house in Iowa and Al had taken two of my products and put them on the window. Do you remember this? Chalk talk? I don't remember this. Oh. <laughs> I think I did. It you wouldn't will. come off. So Al put it on the window, which it doesn't go, it shouldn't be on the window. So it was on the window and we were trying to take it down to, to reposition it somewhere else. And the sun had absolutely baked it on. And it was so permanent at that point that I just remember, I I didn't know you very well, but you walked in and just kind of shook your head. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to take it off with my fingernail and you handed me, thank God, you handed me a razor and it started coming off a lot easier, but it still <laughs> was not what we wanted to be doing while customers were walking in. <laughs> so anyway, that was one. And then uh, obviously there was following a trade show my dogs were barking. <clears throat> oh, let me tell this story. Oh, let Jesus. me tell this story. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm walking through the airport and uh, I come around the corner. And if you've been in the Vegas airport, uh, when you're going down, I think it's, I don't remember what terminal is, but there's a place for a, like where you can get a massage from. I forgot about the story until just now. <laughs> the, I think it's the Asian people right there that give you the massage. I come around the corner and there's a guy sitting in the chair with his feet up, getting his feet massaged. Who is it? Joe Letty. And you can see the look on his face. He's like, of all the people to see me in the airport getting a <laughs> massage, it happens to be Mike. I'll tell you right now, you are literally the last person <laughs> I wanted to walk around that corner because I knew you'd hammer me. So, yeah. So, <laughs> and, and rookie mistake on my part. <clears throat> I remember I broke in a new pair of shoes for that trade show. I wanted, you know, nice shoes for the show. I think I bought floor shimes. They're very nice shoes, but they are murder on your feet. And I remember in an old podcast, I know you don't have a whole lot of sympathy for people with sore feet at trade shows, but <laughs> Domingo, I know he, he can relate to me. He's mentioned it. Um, so yeah, my feet were absolutely killing me. I gave a hundred percent of the show. I went out every night, stayed out, hanging with customers late, up early for breakfast. You guys were always a breakfast. And then my feet were killing me. And I was like, oh, 30 bucks, 15 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> done. Yeah, I happened to walk through that 15 minutes. It was beautiful. Good it timing. wasn't just you. It was your whole executive team. It was your whole leadership yeah, team. Yeah. <laughs> there were about five deep timing. you guys. <laughs> so so I, what, what I do for trade, what I do all across the board for shoes is once I find a good pair, I'll buy 10 pair mm -hmm. of the exact same shoes. And then they're all like slowly break each one in. So when I go to a trade show, my feet are so used to that, that shoe that I don't have a problem anyways. But I spend a lot of time on my feet anyways, like all day, every day. So, so do you have a go-to shoe? For a tennis shoe? No, for like trade shows. Yeah, I do. I have a go-to. It looks like a boot. Um, I don't know the name of it though. I don't have okay. one in here. But if you see me at the next trade show. Yeah. You'll I see, just like, switched to, uh, it's a, I got, uh, on clouds this last, the beginning of this year, they're 10 out of 10. Awesome. Okay. They definitely don't look like, I feel like now you can get get away with it. Like you were saying, the same with you, you're buying nice shoes for shows. I think a lot of people have, it seems like are going away from that. I mean, we just did a show where the, the entire booth had, what was it? The pink or green? What was it? Uh, pink pink shoes. Yeah. Yeah, it was pink shoes. It was pink tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Like the people working the booth had pink tennis shoes on. And uh, so I think you can kind of get away with it if you get like a 
just like a black tennis shoe that's not obnoxious, I think it works fine. And they're super nice. I'm a barefoot type person anyways. Like if you see me in the summer, I don't have shoes on. That's the opposite. When I, uh, (laughs) even when I go hiking this year, this year when I went hiking uh, for a solid one or seven days or whatever, I wear the five finger shoes and I never took them off. That can't be good for your foot. Oh, it's it's wonderful. it can be. I don't know. It's wonderful. I still think it's why the reason like the rest of my family has problems with their knees and their hips and stuff. And I have zero problems and I put way more miles on than any of them. So I don't have any problems. It might be just because I'm tough too. That has to be it. Yeah. So there's no, there's one more story I want to say. So we're, it was when we were changing reps. Remember this? You were our sales rep and you came in, we sat in the conference room and, uh, um, you're, you're, I don't remember who we were changing it to. Probably and I'm, Scott Bell. And I'm on my phone and you looked at me and you said, what are you doing on your phone? I said, I'm deleting your name. <laughs> Do you remember that? That hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were done. I was like, getting it over with right then. And then that was the running joke the next 10 times yeah, in a row that the, you saw him was, who are you again? Yeah. Who is this? You would call me. I'd be like, hello, who's this? <laughs> I would text you. You'd say, who is this? Who is this? <laughs> and you couldn't see my face, but I was secretly going <laughs> very angry. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, this is pretty good. Obviously, you've known us a long time. So yep. um, the other thing you want to bring up, um, you kind of have dealt with uh, us and Wentzko for a long time. Uh, but what other uh, interests outside of work do you have? So I'm a big movie buff, so I will go quote for quote with the best of them on the classics, um, comedies. um, I'm a big Goodfellas fan. That's probably my number one movie. Um, I'm big into golf. Again, not very good at it, but I enjoy playing it. I like going out. Although I will say I prefer a scramble over playing my own ball because it's just less stressful. Then you don't have to actually hit it good the whole time. Well, when I put it into the woods or in the water, I don't have to worry about taking a penalty or going to find it i'll just grab another shag ball out of my bag and play from there that's a, i'm a swing away guy too just send yeah. them out there as hard as you can yeah it's a good strategy so big into golf um i again i have wife and son my son's 15 he plays on his golf team i got him into golf a couple years ago um and he's beating me again um so he and I spent a lot of time together. Uh, we're very involved with our local children's hospital, uh, Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. Uh, we have a very personal story with them. They did a procedure on my son when he was only eight weeks old. So we're my son and I actually, um, as a fundraiser, um, I dress as Santa Claus and he dresses as Buddy the Elf. <clears throat> and we go around Chicago and we raise money for the hospital. And all we ask for is a donation. So my son didn't do it with me for years. But once he got old enough, he started joining me and he wears a Buddy the Elf costume. So <laughs> each year we raise thousands of dollars. So I'll be putting my email out shortly. Um, if anybody ever wanted to look it up on Facebook, just look up Letty Claws, L-E-D-D-Y Claws. And uh, that's my site where I raise all the money. So in, I actually ran the uh, Chicago Marathon in 2017 and 2019, believe it or not. And... Uh, I had to raise a bunch of money for the hospital and I remember going to Nakusa. They gave me a little, a little sponsorship and I asked them if I could approach some of my customers, some of the distributors. And they said, be careful with that because we never want it to look like somebody, you know, made a donation and then you gave them preferential treatment. Nakusa would never allow anything like that. Um, But a few of my customers um, gave a small donation. Um, Judy, actually gave me the biggest donation I ever got. So thank you, Judy. I still remember it. It meant the world to me. You're a wonderful person. Yeah. Shout out Judy on the podcast. So, so what you just backing up, you love movies. This is why we're complete opposites. I don't watch any TV. (laughs) I don't watch any movies. I can't quote a single movie. I like, I just watched, um, the Godfather movies like maybe six months ago. And that's the first time I ever seen them. Outstanding. Um, and that was only cause I was on a plane. I'm like, Oh, I got to watch something. They said, that's what they said to watch. <laughs> and I, I can't stand golf, but I'm actually not bad at it. Like talk to Scott Kutcher who brought me golf and we're like, I had to rent clubs and smoked them. Um, but similar story. We had Tater who tried to die on us twice, he's, twice. Now he's trying to die. So if he, if he does it again, we're just letting him go. Yeah, Third time is not <laughs> the charm. That's what yeah, they're telling yeah. me. Yeah. Basically st- uh, strike three. Yeah. So the same thing, similar. He was one year old and it turned out, it turned out he only had gallstones, 
but like for a one year old, it was like wow, at one. Yeah, they they had nobody. I think they had nobody under twelve ever. So yeah, they cut him. We say it's his brain surgery. Okay, and he has a cut all the way across the stomach. Oh my gosh, which was funny. We call it brain surgery. Then later in life, he did have yeah brain actual surgery. brain surgery. He actually had brain surgery when he was seventeen. Tried to die on us again. We were oh. we were just sending him to school. That's because we're good parents. Like, yeah, you just got a headache. Take some ibuprofen and go to school. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. Rub some yeah. dirt on it. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. Turns out he had a brain infection. Yeah, so. turns out they drilled a hole right in his head. Which doctor this, took pictures of it? We asked the doctors if he'd take pictures of it. That's because that's how we are. And he did. Like the pus coming out and stuff. Oh, my goodness. So, but. This is a first for this podcast. He's I fine. Think. He's yeah. fine. I mean, he's not fine. Yeah. I mean, he was on the podcast. You understand. Yeah, so. he's. <laughs> I mean, the dude will forget anything. <laughs> Like now just, he's got an excuse. Yeah, you just follow him around. You <laughs> pick up all his stuff. Yeah, not fair. So, anyways, back to Nakusa. Yeah. Uh, again, big shout out, Judy. Uh, it's cool to hear that story for sure. Um, so, who is Nakusa? Are you going to run the marathon again? Never, ever it sucks. again. It was awful. It was the worst. So, why'd so, you do it a second time? I'll tell you why. <laughs> so, the first time I did it, um, what was I, your time? I knew you were going to ask that. And eighteen hours. Well, all I'll say is when I got to the end, there was a guy with a sundial that basically said, finally, <laughs> uh, it was not good. Uh, I remember the first time I did it, I did the first half of it in about two and a half hours, which I think was respectable, but I had a pretty bad leg cramp and I ended up walking almost the entire second half. It was horrible. I didn't train right for it. And to see the people that were out there, you'd be like, what are you doing out there with those people? They're, well, they're incredible athletes. And then there's me. <laughs> I did many years ago now. I don't know how old I was. I did the riverbank run here in Grand Rapids. It's 15.5 miles. And I only did it because someone else at our job said he's going to run it. And I'm like, you're not even athletic enough to run. So we talk went back and forth. I'm like, I'm, I'll beat you. Why well, didn't run? So no training, just went out and ran it. And I ran two hours, 11 minutes, which is pretty respectable for someone that doesn't Run, but that was I, a half marathon. It was it's, it's 15, 15. 5 miles. Oh yeah. my goodness! Okay, I just remember coming around the corner at like this Johnson Park, and you can see downtown. I'm like, I got to run all the way back there. And but anyways, I couldn't walk for like weeks, and like I said, I'll never do it again. So, but another funny story. I talked Brent. You know Brent. Yeah, worked here. Talked him into running a 5K with me, and when it was all done, I got him a trophy that said "Dead Ass Last," and it had a <laughs> donkey's butt on it. Walkers beat him. Wow. Which he never ran before either. So like with it, and all the respect, like if you never ran a race like that, like you don't know what to expect. And he was hurting. He was hurting. It's good for you. It's a good learning experience. To answer your question, why did I do it a second time? I saw her after the first one, I was never doing it again. It was, I was in so much pain. It was, it was horrible. The next year, 2018, Anthony Rizzo from the Cubs had a team and they said anybody who raises X amount of dollars can meet him. Um, and my son was a diehard Cub fan, diehard Rizzo fan. And I'm like, oh, man, I raised the amount of money that was required. So I said, all right, next year, if they do this again, I'll jump back in. So the next year, 2019, I jumped back in. <clears throat> I was the captain of the Anthony Rizzo uh, marathon team. Uh, we raised so much money. We were the number two fundraiser for the whole Lurie Children's team, which I think there were 130 people. Some guy had a massive corporate sponsorship I couldn't catch, but I was the number two guy. And uh, we raised so much money that we got the meet and greet with Rizzo. We were supposed to get a pair of shoes, sweatshirt, hat, signed bat, signed ball. We got all of it. But the meet and greet was supposed to come in 2020. Well, what happened in 2020? <laughs> no meet and greets, that's for sure. The pandemic. So we were told, uh, you can't meet with him. He'll meet with you later. Well, the following year, he got traded to New York. So we're like, <laughs> this just isn't going to happen. So the Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation, which was the, the group behind this whole thing, they said, he will meet with you. He's going to come back here as a Yankee, you know, probably playing the White Sox, and he will meet with you. So we went, um, we got the call in like 2022, I think, and we got to go down to White Sox Park, and we got to watch Yankees practice. And um, my son, my wife, and I, and we brought one of my son's friends. 
Uh, we got Anthony Rizzo's seats and we sat there and we, we went out and bought all Yankees gear because they told us he will not sign Cubs stuff. <laughs> That's funny. So we had yeah. to buy all Yankees stuff and we got out there on uh, practice and uh, I have to pick on Aaron Judge a little. Not, is it Aaron Judge, yeah. right? Yeah. I get, so we're all there in Yankees gear. There's no one else there except us and the Yankees. And uh, when he walked by us, we asked if we could take a picture we could for an autograph. He didn't even acknowledge us. <laughs> he had all the time in the world, and we were in Yankees gear, and he just... So I see the pictures of him on social media and stuff, and those were photo ops, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much how closely you follow baseball, but that might be his karma from the fifth inning of the last World Series game, because he, he pulled a me playing softball, dropped a fly ball out to the field just... On the ground. Yeah. So I was torn in that World it's Series. Karma. I was rooting for Rizzo, but I really <laughs> wanted Judge to lose. Go you figure. Had a, you had a little, somewhere in between. <laughs> How do they get one to win and the other one to lose on the same team? You played enough softball. What do you yell when the outfielder drops it? Hey, just knock it down. Keep it in front of you. <laughs> just, just that's play. me from the infield. Just knock that's it what, down. Keep it in front of you. That's what Aaron Judge was doing. He's just keeping it in play. He didn't want, yeah. it, he didn't want to roll by him. <laughs> Did so. you play baseball? No. I'm okay. terrible. Okay. <laughs> I just went out. This was like ten weeks ago and played. <laughs> it was it was bad. We have a church softball team that Tater was playing on, and there was a couple of times they were short, and then it turned out to be. There was one week. At, were you there too? No. It was me, Tater, Tristan, Mom, all playing on the team. Yeah, I wasn't there. I, I played so bad they didn't even let me come back. So, anyways, I think we just had the longest intro to date. So, oh, is that just the intro? Yep, that okay. was just we're the intro. Now. Yep. Here, I, can t- I can say one more story about Nakusa. So we do NASSD, right? Which for people that don't know, it's when people distributors meet with, you know, the upper management of the company. And I had been three or four years. I'd been to it, and nobody knew who I was at the company. Like when you said, like nobody knew who I was. And then there was a a year where it was just me and Judy, and Judy got sick, so it's just me at the table. And it was Guy Lee. Who's the other person that goes? Paul Charpano. Paul. It was Guy and Paul sit at the table and Guy says, so what do you do at the company? And I'm like, I kind of run all at Wensco. He goes, man, we had you judged completely wrong or whoever it was. Like, it was, so I was like, but nobody knew at the time. And then that was, it was kind of that, that moment where I was like, wait, he's all here by himself. I'm like, yeah, I was at NASD by myself. <laughs> so, but anyways, yeah, like they didn't know who I was like. Well, you'd see me sitting here for three or four years. Yeah, for your, just to ride along. I'm just the the charity case, yeah. Judy's charity case. <laughs> well, it seemed like you were kind of behind the scenes for a while. I didn't, I did not know um, <coughs> what authority you had when I first met you. I had no idea. And I might not have had a lot then, but I, I mean, I slowly, ha- I mean, I had it. I always had what I could do, but like, yeah, I never really was out front until, um, I don't know when it happened. All of a sudden it's like. Once people started to realize who I was and more talk came, more talk came, then people would come to talk to me because people would come in here and talk to everybody else. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even join the meeting sometimes. I'm like, oh, tell me later. The wizard behind the curtain, Mike Hall. Yep. I'm a wizard. <laughs> it's questionable. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's get this. So uh, <laughs> 25 minutes in. Uh, so who's Nakusa? Uh, what? And uh, there's multiple brands under that. So what, what are all the brands that you guys represent? So Nakusa has been around for a little while. Um, They kind of got their start in carbonless paper. If you're familiar with carbonless paper, think pink, yellow, white copy uh, receipt type stuff. Um, And they used to actually be owned by 3M. So the building that they're in, in Nakusa, Wisconsin, Nakusa is actually the name of a town. It's about 100 miles north of Madison in the middle of trees. Um, They're in a building up there that used to be the building where Post-it notes were made. That's where they're at today. Um, So they were owned by 3M. 3M eventually spun them off, and they were kind of the standalone uh, doing the carbonless. Uh, Carbonless paper was shrinking. The whole market was shrinking about 6% uh, every year. So that's not good. So in order to uh, survive, they basically started doing mergers and acquisitions. Um, I'm 46 years old. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the toy Voltron. Yep. Okay. Very familiar with the toy Voltron. Thank you. Tyler? No. No. Yeah. So uh, Voltron was essentially a robot that the body was a robot, but then you could bolt on other robots to make it 
the arms and legs. And all of a sudden you had like five or six robots to make this incredibly insane, powerful killer robot. And Nakusa's become a little bit of Voltron. So they've bolted on several companies to make them just a super supplier that has so many different things that our distributor partners can offer. So we have bolted on our tape, which you're very familiar with. They've bolted on Catalina. Uh, so the Catalina and Mojave name, which is the wide format um, uh, and pressure sensitive, I should say, um, company we bought there based in Las Vegas. The Catalina and Mojave name have, have gone away and it's now Nakusa wide format. But a lot of the pressure sensitive items we sell, the stuff for window, wall, floor, laminates, mounting adhesives is from that Catalina company. Um, <clears throat> but they've they had acquired main tape, Kling Z. Uh, recently acquired decorative films, recently acquired a company called Iconics. So you guys a distrib as a distributor now have access to several of those product lines, not all of them because they're not all right in your wheelhouse. Um, but it's the company's really grown in a very impactful way. And we bring so much more value to our distributor partners than when we were just tape or just carbonless paper. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's for us, it's always funny with when we have these open houses, right? You guys will send out like, hey, we have a new product, but I think sometimes it doesn't land until it shows up at your table at the open house. You're like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. It makes a lot more sense now. And I feel like that's you guys every time you come here is like, oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Something new again. Um, like you just said, the window films, obviously, we were just talking before we got on. Like, obviously, that's moving. There's a lot of even government side of things that is pushing people that direction. So it's a good, it's a good option for us to have. Um, so uh, you have all those products. What are some of the markets you guys think you're the strongest in or something sign shops would at least be super familiar with from your guys' portfolio? So we're in tons of markets. Uh, we're not really doing anything cast vinyl, but anything for window, wall, and floor, um, we've got you covered. Um, obviously, for the sign industry, we've got all the different tape products and the vinyl effects products. So the vinyl effects line is our metalized vinyls, very sparkly, uh, chromes, uh, brushed gold, brushed silver, things along those lines. Um, so we have those products for the, the sign guys. Um, any type of letters on windows, letters on a vehicle, um, pinstriping, those sorts of things. Uh, a lot of that stuff is within the, the R tape line. Um, obviously we've got the forms, uh, covered with Nakusa with all of the carbonless papers, synthetic papers. Um, but we're in every type of retail application. Um, yeah, so we're, we're all over the place. Okay. I'm going to go through uh, like a few of the ones on our side of things that if people aren't familiar with, at least they should be familiar with. Sure. So um, the first one I want to start with, with um, for people that haven't heard of the Snaps. Sure. What, what exactly is that product and where is our industry using it at least? Perfect. So Synapse, S-Y-N-A-P-S. -S. Thanks for not correcting me the first time. I appreciate it too. What do you mean? <laughs> no, I mean, you did, You just pretended like I said it right and then said it right. Oh no, so. I wasn't, I was not trying to correct you. <laughs> I don't people, know how to say it anyways. Synopsis. Some people say snaps. Some people say synapse, but it stands for synthetic applications. Okay. Okay. So this product line originated in the Nakusa portfolio. Um, so it's a synthetic paper. It's a, it's a polyester. So where it really found its way was in things like restaurant menus, um, luggage tags, door hangers, things that you don't want destroyed. So in menu applications, you can literally spill ketchup on it, spill wine on it, and um, you, know, you can just wipe it off. So if you go into any Applebee's, TGI Fridays, or Chili's, there's, now, there's not one menu. There's about five menus. There's the drink menu, the app, the the dessert menu, the main menu, the specials menu, it's all sitting there behind the salt and pepper shakers, right? So the restaurants were struggling with, you know, it's damaged, I need to reprint them. Um, it, so for us, the alternative was lamination, which if you've ever seen a laminated menu and it's got that kind of clear frame around it that starts to get dusty and get, there's a hair in there and it's just nasty. Synapse looks a lot cleaner and it will last a lot longer. Um, so when 
when Nakusa had purchased our tape, we figured out that there were some wide format applications that it would work really well with. So Synapse has done really well with banner stands. So it is, again, waterproof, tearproof, stainproof, and it's curl resistant. So if I had a sample of it here, I could show it to you where if you were to just take it off the roll, lay it down, you might see a little bit of memory from the roll. But when you put it in a banner stand, as long as it's tensioned top to bottom, there's no edge curl. And that's what we really are trying to avoid with curl-free solutions. Um, I used to work for a very big name banner company, and they had several products that were, you know, quote unquote, curl free. Um, you know, depending on the application, depending on the specific product, it may or may not have been truly curl free. But the Synapse product, it's it's a premium product. Uh, it looks a lot better than banner and uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a fantastic product and it, you know, curl free. So you can actually grommet it <clears throat> and hang it from the ceiling. So you'll see it in, you know, high end stores, high end retail um, banner stands. You'll see in department stores at like the Clinique counter, or the, the cosmetic section, you'll see it in high end um, auto dealers. So like a Lexus dealership or something like that, when they want something to look nice and they don't want that scrim vinyl, the waffle pattern you see, they don't want that plasticky PVC look, they'll opt for, for um, Synapse. Is it, or do you think it's more common in banner stands than it is in like hanging banners or do you think it's kind of a mix of the both? For wide format, banner stands is its biggest application. Okay. So some of the, the big um, banner houses that do, you know, tons and tons of banners overnight, you know, shipping next day, that sort of thing, have switched to the Synapse product. Um, it's a game changer. Again, it's a little bit more expensive, but, you know, a lot of people find that the quality is well worth it. Yeah. I mean, for us, I mean, a, a good application for this is when we have been doing trade shows lately. So we used to have this eight foot pop up, right? It's super obnoxious. They don't ever go together very well. They're super easy to break. So we've actually switched for some of the smaller shows and we're just sending three banner stands, right? So they're 32 or whatever inches wide. So when you put three of them up side by side, it's an eight foot backdrop essentially. Problem is use regular material for that and they curl and they, the design lines up, right? right. It doesn't really line up once they start curling in. So if someone's doing that specific application or you're in a situation where they do need to be flat, that's where kind of it can come in handy and not curl in on itself, even on the banner stand. So sure. um, that gives you an idea on that one. So our tip you mentioned, obviously people in the Wensco universe should be familiar with the product. Um, so do you want to just explain quickly kind of what that covers and um, how it's different than obviously some of the other application tapes that are out there? So our tape is arguably the biggest name in application tapes in the industry. Um, we have probably the widest distribution network uh, in the industry for the tape products. So anybody who knows the products, and I've met a lot of your customers at the open houses over the years, the product really doesn't fail. <clears throat> I mean, it's consistent as gravity. It's like an energizer battery. You plug it in, it's going to work every time. On the very rare occasion, we get somebody who says, oh, I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. It failed. Usually they had the wrong tape. So there's a lot of different grades. There's high tech, medium tech, low tech. There's stuff for air egress liners. There's stuff for wall coverings. There's stuff with that's clear. There's stuff that's you know beige. And I get the question from your customers a lot at the open house events. When do I use a low tech versus a high tech? And a lot of people really don't know the answer to this. So, you know, the way I explain it is it's pretty simple. Some rules of thumb, the bigger the application, the larger the graphic, the lower the tack you want. Most of the applications are kind of small, taking letters off or something. So they use a high tack. So the inverse is the smaller the graphic, the higher the tack you want. And the reason for that. So, Imagine you cut out, you know, some letters, you cut out the letters off of Pepsi, okay? And that's on a vinyl and you weed away the excess material. And now you have to put a tape on it because you're going to pick this up and transfer it. It's small. There are two adhesives at play. There's the adhesive on the underside of those letters and there's the adhesive on the tape. 
if the adhesive on the tape is not strong enough, it will never pick it up. And that's why you need a high tack. If we're dealing with a really large graphic and you have to transfer something over to a window or something like that, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want the highest tack for that because trying to wrestle that thing off a window is not easy. You'd rather have something with almost post-it note type adhesive to just peel down. So again, the bigger the graphic, the lower the tack you want. And the smaller the graphic, the higher the tack you want. We run into this. Uh, we have our, our cabinet cluster coming up. So when does this, this comes out? The week, actually the week of our cabinet class. Was that right? 18th? It's 20th and 21st. Yeah. 20th and 21st cabinet class. If you want to Rick, be you're supposed it. to know this stuff. We it's, looked to you for this information. Wednesday and Thursday or Thursday. It's the 20th, the 20th and the 21st of November. Anyways. Uh, so when we do uh, like what apply uh, translucent vinyl, you can run to an issue where you run, if you use the wrong tape, it's just does not want to come off. Right. Because right. the adhesive, because you're wet applying it, it's not actually sticking super well initially. Right. Cause you kind of right. need to let all that water get out. If you use too high of a tape, what'll happen is that vinyl will just stay on the tape. It does not want to come off the tape. So that's where we mess it up. Allegedly. I've never seen it happen, but I've heard people do this. You've heard about it. Yeah. I've heard stories of people doing it wrong, <laughs> but, um, so that's another one where it's, you want to make sure you're using the right one. If you're having issues where it doesn't want to come off the tape, it's probably just too high of a tack. It's not like that tape doesn't work. It's right. the wrong tape. So, And for your customers, um, please know sample rolls of everything are available free of charge. We'll cover the freight. We just ask that you use it and don't throw it in a corner and let it sit <laughs> for three years. Um, but uh, Nakusa has a very generous sample policy. Um so yeah, usually when I, I put a whole stack of them, they always go. I get people who are trying to grab 10 at oh, a yeah. time so uh -huh. they can do small jobs. Yeah. And I'll tell someone, you can have the rest of them, but can I just maybe at the end of the show? Yeah. Take yeah, them? Yeah, just come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Always at the end. Yeah, that's funny. Um, okay. So then the main one we talked about, it, we mentioned obviously at the beginning of the episode because he brought these caps that say Nextbond on them. So Nextbond uh, is a new product from you guys. Do you kind of want to explain what that is? Um, we've been getting a lot of questions about uh, what you mean when you explain the adhesive technology. So if you want to go through that too, that would probably be helpful. Yep. So super excited about this product line. It To me, it's an absolute game changer. Uh, one of the things that separates Nakusa from everyone else is our commitment to innovation. And this is a great example. So Next Bond stands for Next Generation Bond. So it's a new type of adhesive that most people are not familiar with. So most people in our industry are familiar with water-based adhesive and solvent-based adhesive and the properties that go along with each. For the longest time, everything in our portfolio was water-based adhesive, or I'd say 99% of our products were water-based adhesive. Um, <clears throat> the problem with that is longevity. So if somebody came to me and said, hey, I need a product that's going to go outdoors for six years, I had to refer them to one of my friendly competitors. Um, some of those guys have gotten some nice business because I gave their name. Um, so now what we have launched is this next bond adhesive. And the secret sauce to next bond adhesive is that it's actually called it's UV cured adhesive technology. So what is UV cured adhesive? So we have a coder in Wisconsin where this adhesive, it starts out in a big drum. It starts out in a hard form. We will heat it up to, I want to say, 270 degrees. We will put it through the machine and we'll come out on the media and it will wet out and then it will get UV cured. That UV curing process uh, turns it um, hard again so that you can actually take the adhesive and stick it to itself. It will not ruin the adhesive system. Like I'm sure you've seen when somebody sticks something to itself, all of a sudden it just turns into a mess. Um, so... The benefits of UV cured adhesive, you get all of the properties of solvent based adhesive that you want, which is longevity, uh, outdoor durability, but you get none of the stuff you don't want. So the harsh chemicals, the solvents, VOCs, that's not in this. That's in solvent. So it's a little bit more of a more sustainable product. It's more earth friendly. Now we do put it on some vinyls, but we also put it on some polyesters. So there are sustainable solutions here. But the coolest part about it is the price. The price is closer to water-based adhesive. 
So now when you come to me and say that you're looking for something for six, seven, eight years outside, you're not paying that solvent-based adhesive price. You're going to get that performance, but you're paying closer to the water-based price. So this is a huge game changer. Nakusa is the only one in the country with a coder that does this. There might be one more company that's importing from the other side of the planet. Um, but what happens if you need 25 rolls and then you botch two of them and they're out? You got to wait for it to come from the other side of the world. Um, we have everything in Wisconsin. So Next Bond is an adhesive technology that we are implementing into a new line of premium vinyls, um, mounting adhesives, and over laminates. And there's more coming. So we did just launch a line of polycarbonates. And without saying too much, we've got more stuff coming that is going to have this great adhesive on it. So we're not getting rid of any of the old stuff, but this is an, another option. And again, it throws us into the longevity game. So for you guys, you guys can now sell this product and give your customers the long-term uh, performance that they want and not have to charge them all that. So I think uh, on our side, the, the best way I know how to explain this to someone is, uh, so typically if somebody's looking for an outdoor application and we're, we are either dealing with, you need it three or less or seven or less. That's kind of the way we look at it, right? And your options are three or less, we're going to push you to calendar vinyl. Seven or less, we're going to push you to cast vinyl. And so kind of what next one fills the void is, okay, say you don't need all the other properties of cast, right? Say we're not doing complex curves. We're not doing anything that needs needs the properties of a thinner material. There's an option where it's priced closer to calendar, but still with longevity. That's gap that next bond is basically trying to fill in the market right now is, Hey, if you just need to put outside flat and it just needs to last outside, this is an option for you versus historically have been like, let's get cast, which most of the time they didn't actually need the, all the other benefits of cast material because they're putting it on a flat panel, but you can get that to filled with next bond. Is that, yeah, that's a pretty good, um, summary. So again, uh, if you just need to put something outside, that's going to take the, the adhesive will last up to 10 years. So in theory, the vinyl, the media that it's on might fail before the adhesive will. Not that we expect that, you know, the, the media to fail, but just a testament to the, 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 the adhesive, um, you know, and I would challenge anyone listening, let's, let me send you a little sample of it, a little piece so you can feel it, try it out. Um, I think it'll impress people quite a bit. Again, it's, this is where, I think we separate ourselves from the competition. Um, it's really a game changing product. It's going to perform and it's not going to cost nearly as much as the other guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that gives you a summary kind of of what it is. Um, it's a new product uh, for you guys. It's new here. We have it in stock at Wensco, which sounds like might be the only place. <laughs> that's no, in there's, stock, a, so. there's a handful of <laughs> dealer partners that have uh, are stocking it on the floor. Good. Um, so, Wensco, um, definitely everybody listening. Uh, Wensco has it. So if you want to try it, um, give them a call. They've got it on their floor. Yeah, we uh, had tested it out here um, and it seems to hold up to everything you guys. I think there's literally a piece. We can't actually see it from here because the printer's in the way, but I think it's literally on that column right there. It's been sitting there. So six years from now, we'll peel it off and we'll let you know. We'll come back. We'll do an episode 50, 100, <laughs> yeah. episode 265, <laughs> we'll come back. We peeled off the next bond. We'll tell you how it went. Um, but no, it seems like a, a good product. So hopefully we'll, we'll start moving it. Um, the last product I had um, on Nakusa side of things is uh, there's this little sticker that comes on your guys' boxes uh, talking about uh, Nakusa bucks. Oh, yeah. Do you want to explain uh, what that is, how it works, or uh, for people that don't know about it? Sure. So anybody who's buying... Um, Nakusa wide format products. So this does not mean the tape. This does not mean the vinyl effects. It's Nakusa wide format products, such as the wall graphics, the trifecta, cyanide, high stat, um, our over laminates, mounting adhesives, um, some of the, the standard three and five year vinyls. So those will have a little yellow badge. Keep going. Okay. Uh, those will have a little yellow badge on, on the box. <laughs> Oh boy! A special guest, <laughs> cutting into my time, kid. <laughs> um, what's his name? 
Brody. Brody. All right. So Nakusa Bucks, um, there will be a little yellow badge on the side of the box. And what that indicates is there is a $5 Nakusa Buck in the box. So in that box, probably wrapped around the media, in, in the plastic bag, you'll see an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. That piece of paper is not a flyer. It's literally $5. So it's $5 that your customers get back. Um, and the way they get it back is they go to our website, nakusa.com. They set up um, a Nakusa Bucks account. It takes 30 seconds to set up your account. Once you set up your account, you can start taking those Nakusa Bucks. They each have an alphanumeric code. So think of like Marlboro Miles or My Coke Rewards. It's a way to, or Uline, Okay, so it's a way for customers to get a little something back. It's a rewards program. Um, and starting at twenty five dollars, they can actually hit redeem and get, you know, uh, any type of card they want. Best Buy, Apple, Chili's, whatever, whatever they want. Some customers are actually letting this thing roll the whole year. And at the end of the year, they'll click redeem on all their Nakusa bucks and they're getting four thousand, five thousand dollars back. So it adds up uh, fast. Some of the guys who are just running an op, uh, running a, a laminator or a printer, uh, they like them because you know who. Sometimes they're not getting taken to lunch or out golfing. Yeah, I'm a rewards guy. So like we travel all the time. Like if if the restaurant doesn't offer rewards, I don't go there. Right. And so that's a good idea. Like if you're if you you know especially the guy that's in the sh- the guy that's in the sh- in the shop. All right. Like, I think it's a great idea for the people that are watching YouTube. This is my, two of my grandkids that happen to show up. This is Brody who's looking at me <laughs> and then Nova. So if you're watching on YouTube, you could see two of my, that's what the interruption was. That was the interruption. Just a minute ago. Yeah. Two grandkids coming in. Who's da- Who's the dad? Tristan. These are Tristan's oh, okay, kids. Okay, great. Yeah. The one that looked homeless so, and the brother up. So <laughs> listen, the difference between this is Tristan's kids here. If you had Tyler's kids right here, this whole place would be tore apart. Yeah. The whole place, like, she's laughing because she knows the whole place would be tore apart. Tyler's kids are a menace. You guys should tell, very your, active. tell your dad to get some Nakusa bucks and uh, <laughs> <laughs> cash yep. in on some stuff. So we, we are the only manufacturer that I know of that's doing a program like this. There's one other um, manufacturer that does um, kind of a... <laughs> A short-term promotion on a few products, and I think it maxes out. But our Nakusa Bucks program goes every day, all year. Uh, There's no limit on how much you can earn. Um, We're sending the kids. We're sending the grandkids back. He said. He said if my kids were in here, they'd destroy everything. Then they they started almost destroying everything, so they had to get they had to send back. Um, but yeah, I mean, on our end, you're th- I think you're the only one. Like I said, we get like short term, um, like rebate style ones come up every once in a while, but nothing like permanent like that. So, right. Um, we have people that fight for these things. So anybody listening at the print shop level, if you have any Nakusa products on your floor, whoops, sorry. Good, if you have any Nakusa products moving. on your floor, <laughs> go and check the box and see if there's a little gold badge that says $5 on it. That'll mean there's a $5 buck in there. So many people throw them out. I almost equate it to like, I don't know if you guys ever get your credit card statements by mail anymore. Most people are doing email. But when I get a credit card statement by mail, there's usually three different things in that envelope that are advertisements. Do I want to order Bugs Bunny checks or invest in their CDs? I I stand over the garbage and throw it out. And I think people treat those Nakusa bucks like it's some type of flyer and they throw it out. It's worth five bucks, so hang on to them. The uh, some of our, the the customers, again, they'll they'll hang on to them the whole year, and the guy will pay for his company Christmas party with a with a five thousand dollar Visa card. That's a pretty good idea. Should give me a five thousand dollar Visa card for Christmas. Not a chance. Okay, <laughs> it's worth asking. Well, sweet. Uh, that was all the the main questions I had. The last question we always uh, try to ask is, what do you guys think sets uh, Nakusa apart from your competitors? So it's a few things. So I know everybody who walks in here would probably say the same thing, but for us, it's really true. So it is our people and our culture for sure. So anytime 
anybody's working with Nakuso, you're dealing with a professional, somebody who's knowledgeable, somebody who's present. Um, if you were to call Amanda out in California for anything, uh, she'll do a ton of legwork for you. Um, she'll give you very thorough answers and any option that would be available to you. Um, a lot of people know Lori Richard. Uh, Lori Richard's on our East Coast, and she's been with the company forever, and nobody knows tape like she does. So she's not just telling you a price and a part number. Um, she's helping you with the solution to your problem. So if somebody calls and says, I'm not sure what to use, there's so many people in our organization that can help. Um, sales management, marketing people, product management people. And aside from the people and the culture, our commitment to innovation. So again, there's nobody coming out with anything like NextBond. We're the first to have it in the United States. Um, we're also growing by leaps and bounds. So if you were to look at Nakusa from when I started back in 2014, it's an entirely different company and we're only getting get bigger. So I kind of joke that our senior team is set out for world domination because we keep acquiring and growing and getting bigger. And it just... It's 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 a wonderful thing with how this company's grown. So again, I left the company briefly and realized pretty quickly that was a pretty good gig. That's a great company. They treat their people great. The customers are wonderful. So and you guys have been a, a big part of it. So without trying to pump too much sunshine here, <laughs> thank you guys for everything you guys have done for Nakusa. So I was gonna say we so I've been to the place East Coast. Where's it at East Coast? Uh, South Plainfield. Um, and walked in, there's office people there and you can just tell, like when you walk in, like I made some joking and say what I said, but everybody gets up, everybody's laughing, everybody's having a good time. And, and it wasn't like, uh, like where everybody's just sitting at their desk doing, it was, you could tell there was a different culture there. <clears throat> and then the other thing I can say about, say about Nakusa is I always look at who's at the top, like, cause I get to meet the people that are at the top for the most part. And sometimes I'll walk away and go like, Man, they're not very smart people, but you, the people that you guys have at the top are smart people. Like you can tell they're smart people. They're down to earth people. They're not just, um, I don't want to say bad about other people, but there, there's some people that, that aren't highly intelligent people. You have highly intelligent people at the top that are very uh, personable too, which you can tell like, okay, they're going to go someplace because you need both those things to grow. And not every company has that. Right. You know, it's been said and, uh, you know, I don't even know if he's going to hear this, so this isn't for his ears, but the best salesperson in our company is Paul Cherapata. Paul Cherapata is the CEO of the entire thing, the entire Voltron. Um, and I don't get him out to print shops very often, but we meet at trade shows and stuff like that. And he can he can position the company and, and sell as good as anybody, the best. And obviously, Guy Lee has been with us forever, too. And, um, you know, He's a big asset and knows exactly where the company's going. Uh, we have true visionaries at the top, and uh, that's good for you guys. That's good for us, too. Perfect. Well, uh, hey, for the outro. Um, we said we were going to ask you, and then we forgot to ask Rick, you. Rick, was, he's been over there bothering us. He's playing a, what's the what's the game where you, uh, uh, is it Pictionary? Is Pictionary where you have to draw it and everyone has to guess what it is? Yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. He's, that's what Rick was he's doing. He's doing trades over there. You're looking at it like. What is he talking about over there? He wrote it out. He could have just typed it out and said he wrote it. I'm over there squinting. Anyways, uh, we talked at the beginning. Uh, restaurants. Food. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you travel a lot all over the place. Uh, if you had to pick, I don't know, your some of your favorite or a favorite place that you go to, uh, where would it be and, and what, obviously? So I like food. I really like food. <laughs> Um, when I go down to Texas, the Texas folks will probably laugh at me when I say this, but Papa Cito's Cantina for fajitas is the best I can find. They might know some hole in the wall places. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it a chain cause they're not all over, but there's one in, there's one in Houston, one in Dallas. Um, but literally the fajitas and here's the game changer. They give you a little vat of scalding hot butter that your liquid butter that you have to dip your fajita in, and I'm telling you, your eyes are bugging out. Butter is his favorite <laughs> yeah. food group. My my favorite food in the whole world oh is my butter. Gosh. It oh, it's so good. It's so good. That sounds super healthy for you. Like, so, um, it's also expensive. Can like, I just ridiculous. have the straw? I just need a straw. It's yeah. really good. Warm butter and a straw is the like 
Some of the best tacos I ever had were in San Antonio. So I know they they definitely got something going on with the food down there. So. They know how to eat down there. The other Bar- one, their I'll barbecues. Tell you, oh, their barbecue is incredible. Kansas City. I know some people, they talk about Kansas City barbecue. They go to uh, Jack Stack or some of the other uh, chains. Q39. Somebody gave me the good advice to go get Q39 in Kansas City. And every time I go there, I don't care how far away I am, I got to go. I should go. What about I, when you come to Grand Rapids? Up. What do you, what do you, where's your place to? Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know. No, I don't know. Uh, the we brewery? just got Dunkin' Donuts. We didn't have Dunkin' Donuts. That's true. We, we literally like Dunkin' Donuts we is like less than them, a year old. We didn't let them around the lake. We're trying to keep them down there in Chicago. Yeah. Tell me where Quick funny story about like? Dunkin' Donuts though, because it's right next to Planet Fitness where I work out. When it, when it opened up, you couldn't get into Planet Fitness because the line to Dunkin' Donuts. The line to, to get Dunkin' Donuts hilarious. and coffee. Was the line to get the Dunkin' gym. Donuts was blocking the the entrance to the gym. My still my favorite is when you leave that gym and people just do the loop. It seems kind of counterproductive. But oh, if, they you go know, you through do, the drive through. Yeah. No, yeah, they leave Planet Fitness and then just immediately just turn into Dunkin' Donuts. Maybe they're getting <laughs> coffee. Yeah, could just be coffee. No, if you've Unlikely, seen, though. I mean, have you been to Planet Fitness? Not recently. They're going to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> they're mostly going to Dunkin' Donuts. All right. Yeah, but. Yeah. No, so here in GR, it depends on what you want, really. Uh, my favorite restaurant in GR is but- Butcher's Union, but... Never been. <laughs> yeah. I've never been either. Rick's favorite is... Uh, dang it. I had a... What's the brunch place? The tapas place. Oh, uh, Sanchez. Sanchez. I think that's at least in his top five. He's mentioned it to me like six times, so I assume it's... What, what's my favorite place? Filling Station. It's not called the filling Mr. station. Mr. Burger. Mr. Burger. Really? It still say filling station on the sign? It I'm might pretty still, sure the sign still says filling station. Say. I don't think they ever changed it. He likes chili dogs. You guys have a lot of good microbrews too, don't you? Oh, yeah. We're the king of microbrews, but I well, literally if I go to lunch, I go to Mr. Burger, two chili dogs and fries. It's expensive. Let me Is tell it? you. Yeah. It's like $7. What time do yeah. they open? Well, they're open. 30 minutes. Okay. Actually, no, they serve breakfast, so they're already open. But yeah, they serve they, breakfast. Lunch is Mr. Dogs. What's Mr. Called? Burger. Mr. Mr. Burger. It's, it's if you called. look up the filling station, it will come up. Okay. It's pretty close. May have to hit it. Yeah. You could. I'm in. Okay. Let's yeah. do it. I had it yesterday. I haven't been there all week. <laughs> I was so. there yesterday. And Monday. I was? Tell them about the ambiance. It's like the cafeteria. I've only been. It is, yeah. I mean, it looks like a. It's a cafeteria like style, a, like at school, where you walk your tray down the thing. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's <laughs> Those good. are some of the best ones. Yeah. Yep. It's good. What's I've my been... second favorite restaurant? The yeah, new well, Chinese you know place. You yeah, the new Chinese place. Yeah. It's been there 10 years. I thought that Trini's place would be your favorite. No, it's too busy. That, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, you can't wait to, you gotta wait to sit down. It's a no go. I don't wait to eat. I won't, if, if the restaurant's on a wait, I won't eat there. Remember when okay. we had to wait to eat at, uh, what's Judy's favorite on the border? Is that her favorite? What's the the Mexican restaurant? The chain one? Yeah. It's on the border. Remember we had to wait. This was in like Chicago. We had to wait like 30 minutes to eat there. And the, every other restaurant was like empty. <laughs> we're all just sitting there like, hey, I, I don't wait gonna, to eat. I guess we're going to wait I'm this not, one out. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't stand lines. Like you should be able to go faster. Like, and I'm a restaurant guy. I'm a former restaurant guy. That's my history is restaurants and. You won't wait even five minutes? If they say you have to wait, gone. I leave, but it'll take you longer to. Doesn't matter. Sit down and eat it. They should have figured out how to sit me down. Thing. Yeah, they should have figured out how to sit me down when I walk in the door. So I think it's fair. Depends just, where you are, though, because sometimes you don't have a choice. Do yeah. you go to lunch early then, so to avoid that? No, the, most of the time the I know where to go. go. There's no line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Philly Station. Once in a while, you wait. I mean, because you're but you're in line. You're not just yeah. You waiting. didn't have to wait last time because we ordered your food. You weren't even there yet. You just showed up. We were still. We've been waiting in line five minutes. And then I eat this new Chinese place that's been there at least fifteen years. <laughs> but it's we still call called the new Chinese because the first time we ever went there, hey, let's go try the new Chinese place. Yeah. Fifteen years later, I'm like, hey, you guys want to go to the new Chinese place? Mm, that's where we go. Yeah, we're kind of creatures of habit. So, and they're close. So it's a win. But Joe, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having Another me. Another long one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our. We never brought up the question you ask on live. Remember that question you asked on live? <laughs> do you remember what question you asked on the live stream? I do. I, I think I think I do. 
You can go back and listen to the live stream. Go listen to the live stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Joe asked a question. <laughs> Joe said, what do you as distributors need from manufacturers, sales reps? I said, oh, figures Joe would ask that because he has no idea. <laughs> Such a, ball breaker. <laughs> Such a ball breaker. I just love when you said afterwards that, yeah, you guys gave me a shout out on the podcast. I was like, we did. They're like, yeah, you said, I don't know how to do my job. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks for that. Sorry. It was awesome. <laughs> my bad, Joe. So thanks for coming to the podcast after our very nice comments we left. You had to come and tell people you actually did. That's why I understand. Okay. Of course. Yeah. On the checkout, don't forget the, what's it called? Nakusa box? Nakusa box. In every wide format box. Check them out. Don't throw yep. them away. Are they in next bond yep. too? They're going to be in next bond too. And Are they already in next bond or not? Yes. Yet? They're okay. In there. And as a thank you, get the next bond for telling you about it. Make sure your first $25 gift card, you just send that to Wensco 5760 safety drive attention, Tyler Hall. We'll make sure to put it to good use on some new Yeti cups. Probably. There you go. <laughs> there it is. So thanks guys thanks, for listening. Joe. And thank uh, you guys. we'll see you in the next episode. So bye. Bye.